Hey everybody, Rob Cohey here. Welcome back. Part three. You guys are binging this like Ozark on Netflix right about now. <laughs> As some of you are. All right, let's uh, carry on with the rest of our design here. Now, this next uh, little offset plane, negative two um, from the back face, start a new sketch. I could have started the sketch on the back face and done the, um, uh, the offset uh, extrude option. I just chose not to in this example. Um, but you know, um, yeah, old habits die hard. So, uh, place the, um, uh, just this, uh, 124 by 16 and a half, um, rectangle relative to center. Um, you'll see what I'm doing here. This, this is the, actually the, um, the part of the part, um, that gave me the most trouble. Um, it, it's an interesting set of geometry here because you, you think, um, there might be an easier way to model this, um, but I couldn't think of an, of an easier way to do it than, than what you're about to see. So um, I projected that, uh, that whole center here, so that I'm, I'm about to create uh, a join uh, extrude here, and I obviously I didn't want to close out the hole, so I'm just going to do a 7 millimeter join operation. Um, so I have the initial layout of this geometry. Now we're going to see what we're about to do here. I'm going to flip back to the uh, to the other one here in just a second because there's a couple of things I think I have wrong and I needed to double check. So you see the upper right hand um, of this part. That's what we're modeling. Um, but I think I got my offset work plane wrong earlier, so I wanted to do a quick measure inspect. And yeah, sure enough, I, I got the dimension wrong. Um, so I'm going to go back. No big deal. Um, kind of distracting here from what I'm really working on, but um, I'm actually going to uh, uh, grab the wrong work plane there. Um, grab the uh, correct work plane, change the uh, uh, the dimension to what it should be, and my features update. So anytime you ever need to redefine um, your work plane, I've seen people like, oh, that's, you know, that's four millimeters too long. I'm going to do a four millimeter extrude cut on that boss. And no, that's not the right thing to do. You know, go back. Go back in time, down on your timeline, and edit that. All right, so now I'm going to sketch on the um, uh, the side of the uh, the face that I just created, and you know project geometry, do a three point rectangle, get the dimension that I'm looking for, and good to go. So you saw also that there's there's holes again that go right through the middle of this thing. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to draw a construction line, midpoint to midpoint, and then I'm going to place two points. on that construction line, and I'll dimension the spacing. Now this one's a little bit different because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dimension something that it's gonna it's gonna look like an error message. People mis misunderstand this as, as an error message. It's not an error message. This is saying you're gonna over constrain the sketch. Do you wanna place a driven dimension? And yeah, of course I wanna place a driven dimension because I'm gonna use it again in the equation. So again, paran, click the, uh, uh, the dimension minus the spacing paran divided by two, and now it's centered. So it's it, it's an awesome little little tip. So if I change the dimension there, you can see that it stays centered. Um, you know, if I would have placed a hard dimension there rather than an equation, then my spacing would have been off, right? So um, definitely, I'd like to hear from you guys if you ever thought of that before, if you've used it, if if that's new to you. Um, if that was useful or not, um, and I'm just, you know, thinking I'm Johnny Cool here showing you some things that you already know, but <laughs> either way, uh, so let's go ahead and place a um, uh, fillet on that and turn the visibility of the sketch back on so I can go ahead and place the holes. And it's going to be the same hole. You'll notice that um, every time you get that little message, um, it says, hey, the hole's going the wrong direction. I don't have anything to cut. Just flip the direction. Um, you'll be good to go. All right, so now this next one, uh, I'm going to start a sketch on this face right here, and it's going to flip it around. Um, it's just determining its, it's normal behavior um, and the view orientation based upon what it thinks you want. If it's not what you want, it just rotate it around. 
Okay, so I'm going to project a couple edges here. And again, here's a here's a great example of when I don't want to see the whole part again. So I'll just turn off visibility of the body so I can focus on my sketch. All right. So clean up my, my sketch environment a little bit. And here's a cool tip. If you I don't know, never tried this before. It's kind of cool. So in the middle of the line command, I can I can switch to an arc. Right. So if you if you if you just let it hang at the end of your line and then left click and hold, um, you'll transition into an arc. Um, kind of cool. It takes a little bit of finesse um, to get it to work. So the first couple times you try it, it might not work. Um, but just uh, give it a try. It's it, it's handy. It's time saver. All right. So now um, what I just sketched out, I'm going to go ahead and make a selection out of. So I'm going to pick all of those, those three lines in that arc. I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose move or copy. I don't want to move this. What I want to do is I want to copy it. So let's scroll down to the move copy, hit create copy, um, and just scoot it on over there. Okay. Um, would it have been the same time for me to sketch that out? Probably, but I wanted to show you the move or copy command. So, so leave me alone. All right. So um, the thing about the copy, however, is that not all of the constraints come along with it. Okay. So if you're wondering why this thing isn't, isn't yet fully constrained, um, it's because you can see if I just kind of drag to see what I think isn't isn't constrained, um, that coincident constraint wasn't there. Um, these vertical constraints and the horizontal constraints weren't there. Um, and then I just dragged that endpoint, and now I'm fully constrained again. You can see that it went from blue to black, and it shows me fully constrained. So again, would it have been faster for me to sketch it out? Yes, but I wanted to show you a feature. <laughs> okay, so I've got the sketch complete. I'll turn the visibility of the body back on. And let's go ahead and extrude um, extrude this back into the part, not a cut operation, but a join operation, um, 30 millimeters. Okay. So we'll just switch it to join, 30 millimeters, and there we go. Cool. So the next thing I want to do is throw a fillet on the back of this, um, 9.5 millimeter fillet, which is the same diameter as our arc, and we're good to go. Okay, turn the visibility of the sketch back on. Now, since we did arcs, we didn't have to put points because it had a center point, right? So I'll just use those center points as reference, and there are my holes. So shaping up pretty nicely here. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a, a little bit of an offset. Now, this offset plane, rather than using a distance, I want to use a reference point. So again, I'm going to use a, a, a work plane, um, an offset work plane. But rather than a distance, you'll see that I'm, I'm able to click on different geometry. So I didn't know exactly what that distance was. Yes, I could have done a measure. Um, but if I just want it to always be at the very bottom um, of that uh, of that fillet, um, I'm going to do a little rib network here. So project geometry. Um, so I want those two edges. I'm going to snap to the midpoint of those two. And then I'll terminate somewhere into the part. Um, you don't have to overlap with the rib command. Um, I just ha habit uh, makes me do that, I suppose. <laughs> so you see I'm going to slice graphics here, um, hit the line command, uh, snap to the midpoint of my projected geometry. Don't want it to be construction geometry anymore, obviously. And I'll just snap down there. And again, you know, if you're not able to see your construction geometry in that hatch down there, you know, again, you can just turn off the bodies if, if you're having trouble seeing um, your sketch. So I use the rib again. Uh, I could have, you know, I could have easily sketched a rectangle and done an extrude down to next. Um, but here's a good uh, use of the web command. Um, five millimeter and I'll go ahead and hit OK. All right. So um, up next, we're going to we're going to finish this thing off in part four. Uh, we're going to add some fillets. Um, we're going to do some appearances. We're going to do some relief cuts uh, and some offsets. Uh, some good stuff to close out this part. Uh, hopefully you found this useful, and uh, we'll see you in the next part four.